to my channel. Next week starts the 2020 runoff election here in El Paso, Texas. And today in this video, we're going to be talking about the district attorney's race. Now, this is in the Democratic primary, and we're going to be doing a comparison of the two candidates for that race. Now, today in this video, we're going to be covering a wide range of topics, including racism, the death penalty, animal cruelty, and marijuana, just to name a few. Now, these two candidates were on the ballot back in February. There was a total of four candidates, and these two entered into a runoff, and that is James Montoya and Yvonne Rosales. And one of them will serve as a district attorney. There is no Republican on the ballot for this position. So whoever wins this race will automatically win in November during the general election. Now, something really important, two important things to note here is that one, in order to vote, you have to have voted in the Democrat primary back in February. Election day was March 3rd and you have to vote again. So your vote from before no longer counts. Please make sure that you do go out and vote if you did vote back in February for the March primary. I'm gonna be providing information on these two candidates to the best of my ability and knowledge. Now, if one of these candidates or someone else reaches out for a correction or a statement in regards to this video, I will be linking that information in the video description. I'll either put the correction in the video description or if it's something that is longer and needs to be addressed, I will link uh, my blog to it so that I can make sure you guys are up to date. So be sure to check the video description to see any updates regarding this video. I gathered this information from the candidates' Facebook pages, websites, questionnaires, and Zoom town halls. I also reached out to both candidates for specific questions. I will say it was very difficult to get in contact with Yvonne Rosales. I spent a couple of weeks trying to get in contact with her office staff, talking to them, um, not finding them. Uh, in order to get the ACLU survey, I was told that she did fill out that survey, but I was never able to get a copy of it. I did also ask for any other surveys that they did or any records in regards to that that they could send me, and I was not able to get any of that, unfortunately. Now, I did get the ACLU survey for James Montoya that he filled out, and so I do have a little bit more information about him. So first, what I'm gonna start off this video with is I'm gonna briefly go over information about each candidate and then go into a comparison on both of them and where they stand on certain issues. After that, at the end of the video, I will be providing a little bit more additional information about James Montoya since I was able to gather that information for you guys. Now, this has been an exciting election. We have two individuals who are both very strong candidates and also qualified for this position. Now, there are three major cases that they will be taking on if they are successful in being elected to the DA office. So of course the first one is the El Paso Walmart shooting that happened back on August 3rd. There's also the murder of Deputy Pete Herrera who was killed on the line of duty. And then lastly there was a Thanksgiving murder back in 2018 and those are three major cases that they will be having to deal with if elected. So let's start with James Montoya. James Montoya is a real and true El Pasoan. His family has been here for six generations. He was in the Socorro School District growing up. He was a Boy Scout and went to college at George Washington University in DC. I find it very impressive that he earned a bachelor's and law degree at the same time and came back to work at the DA's office in El Paso. He's always been passionate about being a criminal prosecutor and dedicated himself to that. He's worked over 100 homicide cases and prosecuted over 50 jury by trials, including murders and capital murders. He was recognized as a criminal justice community difference maker by Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. He's also a coach for Mock Trial, which helps kids who might want to pursue law degrees. He volunteers as a commissioner to oversee the Horizon Fire Department and has served on the advisory committee for the city. So he's been at the district attorney's office since 2014. He has experience with high profile violent crimes, has currently been working on three high profile cases that I mentioned, uh, like the Walmart shooting. And I think it's important to note that in regards to the high profile cases that the DA's office will be dealing with, Montoya is actually endorsed by the family of Pete Herrera, the deputy that I mentioned was killed in the line of duty and a case that they are currently uh, going after. Montoya is somebody that I would describe as hard on crime, 
tough when it comes to DWIs, which would explain the support that he's getting from Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. Yvonne Rosales is from El Paso. She attended St. Mary's University for her law degree. She describes herself as a proud Latina woman who is the only candidate to own her own business, has been a practicing attorney in criminal law for almost 20 years. She has been running her own successful business, a law firm, for 15 years, also experienced in family law worked in the district attorney's office for four years before working at her own law firm. Part of her platform is to work with independent investigative agencies for cases on public corruption and wrongful convictions. She will prosecute all crimes revolving around child custody and failure to pay child support. She wants to create a mental health unit in the DA's office for treatment plans for the mentally ill or disabled that have been charged with a crime. I do like that she focuses on mental health a lot However, I did ask her some questions about service dogs and emotional support animals, and she was actually unable to answer those because she was unfamiliar with them. So if elected, I do hope that she does include that aspect of mental health and also laws regarding them. And she does focus a lot on mental health and getting the mentally ill into programs instead of prisons. Now, she's someone I would describe as more lenient on crime, especially when it comes to substance abuse. And with, you know, DWIs, she wants to make sure that the offenders get opportunities and programs to be able to help them. Now, this has been a very interesting and intense race. Uh, both of them are lawyers, so you can imagine how the debates have gone. Now, while I described Rosales as someone who's lenient on crime, she's actually made this accusation towards Montoya, saying, especially in child custody cases, where the rules for that have not been followed through with. She's accused him of being lenient on those offenders, which he has actually denied. I will say that Montoya does usually stay very calm and respectful during these dialogues, whereas Rosales does sometimes get emotional and does not hesitate to make accusations about her opponent. Uh, for one example, she has uh, been very insulting towards his age, saying that his youth makes him a bad candidate. Now, I did send the candidates a few questions and both responded. I wanted some clarity on a few things that I think are relevant to El Paso right now. Some of their answers are actually pretty long-winded, and this video is in itself already going to be pretty long. So I'm going to summarize most of their answers. However, I will be providing their full answer to this. Uh, on my blog, so I will also include that link in the video description if you want to read the entire response. I did spend a good amount of time trying to get into contact with Ms. Rosales, and it was difficult. The only information I could find to contact her through was uh, her number to her law firm or just using Facebook Messenger app. Uh, there was no email provided on either her Facebook or her website, and I did ask a couple of times for an email address but was not provided for one. Uh, after I sent her some questions through Facebook Messenger, she did then respond by email uh, since I attached my email to the questions. So while I was never able to get surveys from her, she did answer my questions. However, she did include a response at the beginning of uh, this email, which I will read to you. Um, it says, so this in no way is intended for interview purposes, but simply in response to a citizen asking questions via my instant messenger. I did inform her assistant on multiple times that I was using this information to create a comparison video of the two candidates. Now, my first question was uh, in regards to Patrick Cruz's, who killed 23 people. Actually, I think it might be 24 uh, now because I think someone in the hospital died um, this year. Uh, killed people at the El Paso Walmart, will you fight for the death penalty or life in prison? Now, in response to this question, she provided me with information about the case and what is currently happening. Nowhere in the response did she say what she would do if elected as DA or uh, what her personal opinions on it were. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed that she didn't give a direct response on this case. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest, worst things that has ever happened in our community. And so I was a little disappointed that she didn't have a direct response uh, to this because I think that this is really important and all of us as voters uh, probably want to know where our DA is going to stand on this issue. Mr. Montoya has made it very clear in his interviews and surveys that he will seek the death penalty for Cruz's 
and uh, it's something that he's actually currently working on so he is very familiar with the case. And some people support the death penalty, some people prefer life in prison for these types of criminals, and regardless of your beliefs, I think that it's your right as a voter to know where the candidates stand on the issue. Which brings me to my next question, which was, do you support the death penalty? Uh, the response that Miss Rosales gave, again, was not very informative. It was very lengthy, and she doesn't seem to oppose the death penalty, but she didn't have a strong stance on it either. So I didn't really feel like I got her opinion out of that. Based on Mr. Montoya's surveys, he does believe that the death penalty is an appropriate sentence for some murders. However, he does not believe that it should be given across the board to all of them, just as he puts it, the worst of the worst, and he does not believe that the death penalty should be used as a plea deal. Now the next question I have for them is, will you prosecute animal abuse charges when there is physical evidence of abuse? Now Ms. Rosales does of course have animal cruelty as part of her platform, as I had mentioned, and she gave this response. I've stated many times that the Animal Cruelty Task Force needs to have better training through the DA's office from the court side of the case in order to make sure that the convictions are obtained. And Montoya's response is that he fully intends to prosecute animal abuse. He believes that those that are willing to harm an animal would also be willing to harm other people and pointed out that most uh, serial killers and domestic abusers start off by hurting animals. Now with COVID, we're seeing all kinds of things happen everywhere. There's counties where people are uh, getting huge fines or even jail time for breaking quarantine rules and mask regulations. So I wanted to give them the opportunity to also talk about this. Um, personally, I'm not sure how this would directly relate to the DA's office if they prosecute on that, but it's a huge topic right now. So I thought it was a good idea to cover that. My question was, we have a unique situation going on right now with COVID-19. Would you prosecute those that break quarantine rules, mandatory mask regulations, or other regulations during a pandemic? And Ms. Rosales responded, as for COVID, this is new territory and we have to see where we are in 2021 what is happening with vaccines, the CDC opinions, the new medical developments, and rate of infection. What legislation will come to pass regarding the issue September 2020? Personally, I didn't really feel like this response answered my question. Um, Montoya responded, although the governor initially permitted criminal prosecution and jail time for certain violations, at this time, violation of the orders are not criminal in nature that is, they are limited solely to civil enforcement actions against businesses. The district attorney's office does not perform civil enforcement actions, so it is a new point. I felt like this explained it a little bit better. It's not something that falls under their authority, but I still thought it was important to include this because COVID is one of the most talked about things right now. Uh, last question I had for both of them is, uh, any endorsements you have received that you would like to mention? Uh, Rosales did not respond on this. I don't know if she has endorsements from anyone. I have checked Facebook, her website. I wasn't able to find any. Montoya did respond to this and he is endorsed by the El Paso Times, the Greater El Paso Association of Realtors, the El Paso Municipal Police Officers Association, and the El Paso County Sheriff Officers Association and the family of Pete Herrera, who's the sheriff that was killed in the line of duty. There was also multiple other uh, family members of victims that have endorsed him. Uh, it was a long list, so I'm not gonna include it in this video, but please check uh, the link to my blog where you'll be able to see the full list. Now, I did have a few questions just for James Montoya, which I'll be going over. So both of these candidates are actually supported by some controversial figures here in our local community in El Paso. So Yvonne Rosales is supported by conservative Anthony. Now, I don't see a personal connection here. I, I haven't heard of one, so I might be wrong, but I don't think that this is personal. Whereas with James Montoya, he is supported by Jaime Abetia, and it seems like the two are close friends. I've seen multiple people saying that. Uh, I've seen photos of them together. So so I thought it was a good idea to ask him about this friendship directly. Jaime Abetia is somebody who has a blog that is focused on local politics in El Paso. He's written several hit pieces on uh, Ivan Rosales. 
and he does actually have an extensive criminal history. So I thought this was something that um, I should ask Mr. Montoya, and he did respond to it. So my question was, voters have expressed concern over your relationship with Jaime Abetia, who has a long criminal history, including showing porn to a minor. He also writes an online blog in which he targets your opponent often. Would you like to give a statement about your relationship with Abetia? And here's his response. Regarding my relationship with Jaime Abetia, I would call him a friend. Jaime has been running his blog and has been a fixture of the local political scene and Democratic Party long before I knew him. I am grateful to have his support as I am grateful to have the support of thousands of other El Pasoans. My friendship with him has never affected or influenced the way I perform my job and if elected, I guarantee it will not affect or influence the way I manage and lead the district attorney's office. I really appreciate his direct response uh, to this question. I find honesty in politics to be very refreshing. As I mentioned, Montoya is currently employed at the DA's office, and Yvonne Rosales has made accusations that his co-workers have been threatened with being fired if they do not support him as a candidate for this race. So this is something else I thought would be good to ask him about directly. My question was, your opponent has made claims that your coworkers have been threatened with losing their jobs if they do not support you as a candidate for DA. Would you like to make a statement on these accusations? And here's his response. I'm extremely proud to have the support of my colleagues at the district attorney's office. It means a great deal to me to have their confidence and to be held in their esteem. I won a decisive majority of the straw poll conducted by the El Paso Bar Association. Even with four candidates in the race, it is completely anonymous and a clear reflection that I have the majority support of our community's legal profession. And then he did include a link to that survey, uh, so that's also going to be on my blog if you want to click the link for it. Frankly, any allegations about jobs being threatened is my opponent projecting. I have heard numerous reports of my opponent's campaign team openly discussing their intentions to fire career prosecutors who have dedicated their careers to the citizens of El Paso, as well as intimidating criminal defense lawyers for not supporting her. So that information will be linked uh, in my blog if you guys do want to check out the survey that shows uh, he has a lot of support. Uh, within the uh, attorneys of El Paso. Now we're going to be going over some more comparisons of the two candidates and this is things that I have gathered while watching this race and first we're going to start off with confronting systemic racism. So the two candidates have talked about what they immediately want to do if elected to confront corruption. So let's go over Yvonne Rosales. Training on confronting unconscious bias, having a public integrity unit, Transparency in government, keeping the public more informed on high-profile cases by using social media platforms to reach people, be more involved with the general public, training to make sure everyone is treated fairly regardless of race or gender, have body cams for every officer. And then Montoya wants to make a public integrity unit of lawyers and investigators who will only deal with public misconduct of public officials to include police or elected officials that would be their only job and the only type of cases that they would investigate. This team would be on the scene immediately following an officer involved shooting. Any use of deadly force will be presented to a grand jury for potential criminal charges and reports will be made explaining why charges are not filed so that the public can view it. More research and data collected to make sure that everyone is being treated fairly. Now, of course, we do have the protests that are going on with the murder of George Floyd. And both of these candidates have been asked about that. And their answers were pretty similar. Both candidates believe that action should have been taken immediately in regards to George Floyd's murder. Uh, they both seem to think that uh, based on the videos, that there was enough evidence to arrest somebody. So they do feel like in that situation, uh, it, it took too long to get somebody to respond to it, to, to be arrested. And in their situation, they would have done it much quicker. So they're uh, very similar in the response on that. With Montoya, he also went on to say that he thought that there were problems with the autopsy. He believed that the results for the autopsy of George Floyd actually came out too quickly. He thinks that it should have taken longer, that typically you're waiting for uh, test results and things like that that just uh, take time and that those things should have 
um, just, just taking a little bit longer, that there was something strange about how quickly they got results from it. Rosales also went on to say that she was open to having an independent agency review corruption cases or police brutality, such as having the Texas Rangers come in to help with these issues. And of course, both have been asked about qualified immunity. Now with James Montoya, he says he understands where that's coming from with wanting to get rid of qualified immunity. However, he feels that this would actually not help things. That He thinks that with qualified immunity, it actually wouldn't really make a difference in trying to pursue cases against police officers who use excessive force. Uh, for Yvonne Rosales, when asked about uh, taking away qualified immunity, she did not answer this question directly, um, but it, it seemed like it wasn't something that she supported. Now, when it comes to defunding the police, neither candidate believes in defunding the police. However, each candidate has a little bit of a different response when it comes to this. Yvonne Rosales says that she believes that police do need to have special gear when showing up to protests because you never know if the protest is going to turn into a riot or what's going to happen. So for the safety of the officers, they do need to be protected. Now, when asked about defunding the police, James Montoya, uh, like I said, he does not believe in defunding the police. However, he does believe in supporting other community outreach programs and other things that would help make the community a safer place. Now, he does believe that the police are asked to do way too much. Uh, that there's a lot asked of them and that there are better ways of sometimes handling situations. So while he doesn't want to defund the police, he does want to have more programs uh, in the community, such as crisis intervention teams and wants to expand on that. He also went on to say that he has prosecuted police officers that have committed crimes and that he will continue to do so. Now, when asked if they would take money from police associations, Yvonne Rosales stated that she has never received money from uh, police unions and that she does not plan to in the future so that the public would feel that she would be fair and just in her decisions. However, I do believe she did seek the endorsement from the police association in the past, so I'm not sure if this is a newly formed opinion. That endorsement actually went to James Montoya. So when asked if he has received money from uh, police unions, he stated that yes, he has. Uh, he plans on continuing to do so in the future for his campaign, and he has received money from uh, police unions and police officers just as personal donations. And he does have the endorsements, like I said, from the Police Officers Association and the Sheriff's Officers Association. However, one thing that Montoya did mention is that even though he does have the endorsements from the police unions, he does also have endorsements from other attorneys who are actually in the process of suing the police department. So uh, interesting, he does have endorsements from both sides. Now the next thing I want to talk about is Black Lives Matter. Now when confronted with the question, do Black Lives Matter, Miss Rosales went on to say yes and then proceeded to say that all members of the community lives matter and kind of went around the question. Now, I do believe that she does believe that Black Lives Matter, but she didn't answer this question directly per se. When James Montoya was asked this question, immediately said, yes, Black Lives Matter, and went on to talk about the protests and how the protesters do have a right to, to feel upset and to feel the way that they do. Montoya went on to talk about how Blacks are arrested more and incarcerated more. He does not believe that this is a problem in El Paso, but does believe that this is a problem nationwide. Now we're going to jump over to talking about marijuana and the candidate's stance on that issue. Now Montoya isn't really lenient on marijuana charges, but he also isn't trying to get as many people as possible arrested and booked on those charges. He does support the site and release program. Since marijuana is still illegal in Texas, he believes that the law should be upheld. He wants to push for first chance programs where individuals with under four ounces are cited and released. 
This would include a program, a small fine, or community service, no arrest or criminal record. A warrant and arrest would happen for those that do not respond to completing the program. He supports reducing marijuana possession civil penalty. Of course, that would be on our legislators and not him. And does not support felony prosecution of THC vape pens. Now, Ms. Rosales' take on this, I would say, is uh, she's more lenient, doesn't think it's as big of an issue, will not prosecute marijuana charges without lab results that show how much THC the person was in possession of, doesn't think someone's life should be ruined over personal possession of THC. Now, neither Rosales nor Montoya want to pursue cases for medical marijuana card holders that have these cards from other states. Ms. Rosales has stated that she believes that she'd be able to help people more with these convictions if she was elected to the DA's office because James Montoya has currently been working there and has not done anything to make changes. Now, Montoya did respond to this by saying that he is just currently employed at the DA's office and works on murder cases and does not have any jurisdiction over marijuana cases in order to make those changes, but that if he is elected, that is something that he does plan to do. And then I wanted to briefly go over their response to COVID-19. Both candidates have been wearing masks following quarantine recommendations. Rosales has been thankful to nurses and medical staff for being on the front lines of this pandemic. She has put out information on food distribution centers and financial resources during quarantine. Montoya has spoken about the problem we are seeing in the rise of domestic violence during quarantine and that he will make sure those cases are a priority for the DA. And then lastly, I'm going to go over a little bit more information that I have on James Montoya. I don't have answers for this from Yvonne Rosales uh, because I was not able to get surveys from her. So this is just going to be about James Montoya and his stance on some issues. Uh, when it comes to incarceration reduction, uh, Montoya claims that based on population size, El Paso County already has a very low incarceration rate compared to state and national averages. He does believe that over-incarceration is an issue, just not in this area. He does go on to say that if the county was sending nonviolent first-time offenders to prison without public safety in mind, then the goal should be to reduce incarceration. Montoya wants to charge young adult teenagers as teenagers. Based on brain development, a 17-year-old should not be tried as an adult for nonviolent offenses. In regards to criminalizing consensual sex work, here is Montoya's response. While I intend to decline and divert prosecution against sex workers themselves, I will continue to file and prosecute cases against purchasers, organizers, enforcers, and other systemic participants who continue to perpetrate dangerous work. I agree that sex workers are an exceptionally vulnerable population, that few of them affirmatively choose that line of work voluntarily, and that many are victims of coercion and trafficking. Montoya is against anything that would criminalize a doctor performing or patient seeking an abortion, so I think that would make him pro-choice. He is against local law enforcement being used to enforce federal immigration laws, stating that the DA's ability to successfully investigate, solve, and prosecute crime depends on the community's willingness to help local law enforcement without fear. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped you decide which candidate you want to vote for. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to pick the candidate, especially when they are in the same party. Of course, always remember, vote for people, not parties, and please go vote. Remember, any changes that needed to be updated for this video is going to be in the video description, so be sure to check there for updates. And also, uh, I'll have links to my blog for more information and details that were left out of this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos about El Paso, and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye!